This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a GE dual fuel range where the broil isn't working anymore and it's had the broil element replaced but still not working so we're going to be replacing the control. This is the model number for this particular unit and this is a pretty easy procedure. Just take you probably 20 minutes to do. I'm just testing when I got here to make sure that it's true that the broil element is not working and the customer let me know that they just replaced the broil element but still not getting any heat. So what we're going to be doing is getting the stove pulled out. I'm grabbing it by the hinges down here at the bottom just to get it moving and now kind of broke the inertia. Now I can grab the handle and the top and kind of shimmy it out of where it slid in and then I'll reach in here and just pull out this 240 volt power cord and now I have a quarter inch drive and I'm going to take out these little quarter inch screws on the upper back panel and behind that will be the controller and the controller has a couple of relays and the relays can send power to the bake element and to the broil element and I think on this one the relay for the broil element is no longer working but to fix it you have to either solder in a new relay or just replace the controller so we're going to replace the controller I did notice though some evidence of rodent infestation there's little rodent droppings and you can see some uh, maybe mouse urine or rat urine in here so it could be also that this has been damaged by the uh, mice chewing here's the new controller model number or part number I'll put a link in the description below too I'm taking pictures now of how all the wires are connected to the circuit board on the controller because <clears throat> so I'm going to take them all off but I want to make sure I have a good photographic record so when I put the wires on the new controller it'll be really easy sped up the camera here a little bit so I'm now wiggling off each one of these connectors you could also use a pair of needle nose pliers or pliers to help you but many times you can just grab it and pull back and, and wiggle and it should come off these are called spade connectors these black things here are the relays. One's for bake, one's for broil. The bake actually is working good, it's just the broil. So we're gonna wiggle off this connector. So we're gonna wiggle and pull back and that'll come loose. And this longer one also came out. And we'll wiggle off these connectors. A lot of these controllers for older ranges like this are actually uh, rebuilt. They're not brand new, but they are been redone with brand new um, electrical components. Just taking another photograph of these wires here at the bottom. We'll pull those off. And then to get the controller off, there's just four Phillips head screws on the four corners of the rectangle. Take those out and the controller will come right out. When you um, want to put on the new controller, you do have to connect it to a couple of metal pieces that are, are connected to the old controller. We'll show that here in a second. So usually when um, a bake or broil doesn't work, you can just replace the element. It's usually the element that's worn out. So I'm just spinning off those Phillips head screws that hold on the controller at the corners. But if you replace the elements and it still isn't working, it's most likely the controller. Taking out those other Phillips head screws and we should be able to just pull this old one out. And here we are removing these metal brackets that are on the sides of the old controller. And we're going to add them onto the new one. And they're one on the right, one on the left, and they come out with two Phillips head screws on each side. 
the new controller doesn't come with these brackets, but you do need them to mount the controller into your range. So put those two Phillips head screws in. Relays are electro electrical mechanical devices, so it sounds kind of funny, but sometimes if you have uh, an element that won't heat up or a broil element that won't heat up, if you hit the console with the heel of your hand pretty hard, sometimes it can jar the relay and allow the mechanical connection to happen and you'll get power back. But most often you have to replace it. So I'm putting the new one in i have this foam pad that was on the old controller i have that at the bottom i think that's part of probably heat insulation heat protection so when the oven gets hot it doesn't get the controller hot I'm putting in those screws to hold it nice and tight and then once you've done that you can just put on all these spade connectors if you can't remember where one goes you can just check the reference you took with your smartphone and do make sure they're all on there nice and tight so you want to push in kind of wiggle them on the way in too so sped this up a little bit controllers are pretty expensive so when you have a no heat situation you do want to try the elements first which is usually the culprit they get hot and cold so many times that they can get an internal break where they no longer have electrical flow. One thing I'd like to advise you guys too is to never use your self-clean feature because the self-clean feature can damage the elements. It gets too hot. So we're putting that panel back on and then we'll just add those quarter inch screws back in, plug it back in and give it a little test. Make sure everything's working. So I'm gonna press the broil command, press start, and then open the door, and press in on the little door switch, light will go off, and I can feel